Welcome back to Death's Gold Embrace. I am um, have broken into Lord Highwater's mansion. We're looking for the formula for synthetic emeralds that uh, he was supposed to have purchased from the inventor Miller. And I'm here in a dark kitchen and just about to start exploring the rest of the house. Map kitchen is here. We haven't been to any of the other rooms on the ground floor except the storage. In the storage, these stairs here lead down into the basement and the servants' quarters. And we found a way through those to an unmarked staircase in the kitchen uh, that also leads down to the basement. So there's guards, there's been a guard patrolling up and down this hallway in, in and out of the kitchen and his helmet is uh, has a nice little metal bit that hangs down the back to protect his neck. I'm sure there's a technical name for it that I don't know. The long and short of it is I hit him with my blackjack and instead of him going thud and him falling unconscious it went clang and he got upset with me. Very rude. You know, I'm just doing my job here, but, uh, you know, he took offence, chased me a little, and, uh, is still, he's now back to his patrol route, but, uh, I need to keep an eye out for other guards, not just assume that I can knock them on the head, but, uh, observe their helmets beforehand. So, I'm gonna start with the dining room. And turn the lights off, I think. That's bright enough. Is this valuable? This is valuable tableware. And valuable big chandeliers. I'm not sure where Garrett's putting them, but... The bottle is not valuable. I right, want 2,000 loot out of uh, 5,000 I think we need to get. That's pretty good already. That's valuable, you know, mansions like this tend to have a lot of valuable goods scattered around. So this should lead to the hallway and the foyer. I don't like this hallway. I don't like tile floors. I don't like jumping onto tile floors by accident when I meant to jump over them. At least I can turn the lights off, that's nice. Alright, so this is the foyer. Which might have guards now. Does sound like it might be. So they're coming this way. I hope not. <coughs> yes. His helmet does not appear to have the <coughs> knockout protection. So if I'm quick, or I can hit him in the face. Take his money. He should not be a problem. Let's just close that door. Somebody else walking around there. Just creep carefully across this noisy, clattery floor. And drop him in the corner out of the way. Nobody should find him there. Good! It's been a while since I saved, so let's save just in case I mess up and get murdered. Any other guys there? Well, it's all tile floors and very noisy, and I can't really walk that way without alerting anyone who happens to be walking that way. So let's come this way. This is going to be the kitchen, right? That is indeed the kitchen. So, can I turn that light off? Oh, no. Oh, I see they have, uh, that's why they have knee-high lights. It's like emergency lighting. You can still see where you're going. And, uh, when the main lights are off. Right, so here we have the courtyard. We have stairs down to somewhere. We have a balcony that uh, appears to be all metal up there. It doesn't look like there's any wood. Not that I have any rope arrows, so you know I don't think I can climb up there, but it could be a way out. I do see glass windows everywhere. Be talking to myself. Uh, you know, I can break glass windows if I need to, but uh, it's very noisy. I better not if I don't have to. What's down here? It's locked. And I do not have the key. Lots of food. It's not the gate key, it's not the office key, which makes sense. So, there's another thing I, I like about this uh, mission design is they put labels on all the keys to tell you what they're for. 
which occasionally is a little, uh, you know, got a footlocker key or someone that's felt, and I'm not quite sure how I recognised it as a footlocker key specifically. But generally it's good, because otherwise you have a mess of, oh, here's a brown key and here's a gold key and here's a silver key and, you know, and they all look so similar and you wonder which key is which and spend so much time scrolling through them and juggling them. That's a nice little, uh, touch for the player. What's that? Hey, hey, is someone in here? Did you hear my one footstep? Uh. How rude. Here I am. Can we pick you up? No, I can't. Who was that? Someone there? Is, is someone there? Oh, there's nobody here. Oh well. I even have to put a moss area. There's so much traffic. Let's move the evidence. Yeah, go on, go. <clears throat> Sleep in a pile with the other dozing people. Nobody heard that, did they? Just bloody floors and get out with his tap dancing boots. Well, he's not. He's not looking for intruders. He's just wandering around. Okay. Ditto. I'll close the door and you won't hear me at least. <coughs> Let's turn some lights off. Please don't notice me. Can I reach your belt from here? No, not quite. You, can you stand a mite closer? There we are. Okay. Who made that noise? What noise? That little ding of loot? Seems quiet enough now. Yes, it's quiet enough. Okay then. Board. Oh, he's in the ballroom, I think. Yeah. What am I gonna do with him? How am I going to deal with him? I'm sure there's loot down the other side of this ballroom, but it's a little too noisy here. <laughs> Comes another servant. I'll deal with them before the guard. Should be easy enough. Or not, if he's not coming this way. There's nobody here, guard. Don't. You didn't see anything. Oh, there's a light I can. Uh, gas lamps. That's unusual. Everything else is electric and they've got gas lamps in the ballroom. Help! Yeah, the guard heard his cry. <laughs> It was nothing. Good sir. Let me put out this light for you. Hello? No? Someone there. Those look like guests. Um. My archery skills are ridiculously bad. No, it's not working. Right, uh, I have three more moss arrows. Okay. So why don't I stick one here? And I should be able to, uh, next time he comes and stands in this corner, knock him out without him hearing me. <clears throat> I'll save, not in case he sees me, but uh, just in case he sees me and kills me. If he just sees me, that's alright, I can run away. No, 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 don't stand there. Good sir, come here. Oh dear. Somebody through there as well. Hearing doors opening and footsteps walking around. I know there's somebody down that way through the door that I closed. Is he suspicious or is he just short sighted? <laughs> I'm gonna assume short sighted for now. Come on, guard man. Just stand in this corner. I'm gonna hit you on the head. Yes, stand, stop. Thank you! That's exactly where you need to be. Well, you can join your fellow employee of Lord High Water in this dark corner. Good, right, now we can explore here. We can steal that gold candlestick as well as blowing it out. 
We can turn the lights off, but not the gas lamp. Uh, is this just musical and not actually valuable? Right, Garrett, back to work. Oh dear. Just go on the wood, across the moss, and back onto the carpet. So I think the footsteps I'm hearing here is the guard that was patrolling up down the kitchen, is it? Maybe it's another servant, I don't know. I will go that way later. Let's continue exploring down this way first. So, check the map. We have another stairwell leading to the next floor. Okay, that's what's in these two rooms. We have the game room and the parlor up this side. Let's go play some games. Somebody's asleep on the bench. Let's creep slowly and carefully across this patch of tile. We wouldn't want to wake them, that would be uh, Let's turn the lights out, they'll sleep ha more happily with the lights out, and they'll sleep even more happily with a might of persuasion here, I think. No? Okay, they should be unconscious anyway. Alright, uh, other end of the hallway is again the foyer, and there is indeed a guard. He's got money on his belt. I want the money. I want the money. I don't want the tiles. I want the money. There's other guards running around. I have two more moss arrows. Alright, I'll come back to him later. I might not. I'm not sure I want to uh, spend the moss arrows just yet on pickpocketing. Is he awake or is he yeah, he's dozing in his seat? But uh, more tiled floors. Let's try the game room. Where's the light switch? Alright. Loot. Wow, they're playing the game and they stopped in the middle leaving all their money on the table. Uh, giant dice. A pretty enormous dice. Oh fuck. Somebody show me. Hello! Let's go around the table! Uh, what's my escape route? He's fast. Out through the kitchen. Good, I left the door open. Alright, he's lost me. Phew! I was not expecting hell he go? him to be wandering around there. I'll turn you up sooner or later. As he have Oh he is the same he's the exact same one with the uh helmet that I can't that I can't knock him out. So let's leave him there and go back to my business and just remember that he is patrolling here. Oops. Yeah, a few more coins to steal. Right, we've taken all the money. It's now a little darker. Oh, there's a bit more money. There's bottles, non-valuable. A lot. Locked container. But we should be able to unlock it easily enough. There we go. It has a metal key. And there's a note. I hope this describes what the key is for. Helen and Esther, please do a better job of keeping the bar and game room clean. After the party last weekend, there were still wine stains and coins on the floor the next morning. 
When we have guests staying overnight, we might see the mess upon waking the next morning. It doesn't speak well of the staff. Make sure this improves the next time. Lady Highwater. P.S. And make Benny clean up his own messes. Well, I don't want to know... No, not that. What kind of messes Benny is leaving. Best not ask. Are there coins on the floor? I've done any stains. Uh, oh, there's vomit. Gross. I'm not going to step in that. Broken chairs. Now in this room, we have a guard dozing on his chair. So my question is, can I knock him out? I'll leave the door open for the escape room in case I can't. Who's noising about then? Uh, yeah, that was not quite right. All right. Stop fooling around! Where are you? Ah, oh, that's more like it. More music. More loot. I suppose I could have just left him to his business and uh, looted the room without waking him, but uh, he'll sleep more soundly now. Yeah, it's getting late. Hurry up, Garrett. You're here on a job. You've got almost 3,000 loot out of the 5,000 you need. Uh, where is that guard? Well, not here, so... But he must patrol all these hallways, because he just walked past the game room and saw me. Oh, that's... Oh, noisy. Nobody heard me. Alright, time for the map. So, we have not been to the foyer yet. We haven't been to these two little rooms here either. There's a guard patrolling all the floors, just kind of a nuisance. I guess he comes up and around the hallway and probably goes right round, does the circuit. There's at least one guard with some money in the foyer. There's... I could hear someone else patrolling probably on the upstairs around there, probably around that area. So, I'm going to go up through one of these stairways. Now, I know there's somebody here, we're here walking around up here, so I'm going to take this stairway over here. And see what's in upstairs. Yeah, there's somebody here too. Uh, yeah, in the break I did check. Uh, this music that I recognize. Uh, you gave yourself away that time. Yeah, I did. Uh, and it is indeed Johan Johansson's uh, Odia demo. So, if. Me, this probably means I'm going to get some uh, copyright claims against this video, but I don't think that bothers me much. I'm not monetizing anything here. As long as. The question is would they block it or would they mute it? Either of those would be bad. So I might have to... Hey you! Come back here! <clears throat> oh dear, not two of you. Alright, he's going the other way, that's fine. Uh, so I'll have to keep an eye on the video to see if there's any copyright claims and if bits of it get muted. I might have to hack it around to stop the music. Give up, turn around, and I'll... No, no, no. Turn around, good sir. You're bothering me. That's right. Come and sleep in the corner. So that uh, guard with his unfortunate helmet is still patrolling the hallways, he's probably going to come down this way, so let's get out of here before he does. Bloody noisy floors. The Lady of the Lake and other stories. Oh, there's carpet. Nice. A light switch. I think I can hear someone on the other side of the door there. There is this. darkness. More darkness. January 10th. It's me and Jeff is guarding the staircases again. 
I suppose it's a good post, beats having to walk around all night long, and sure as hell beats getting stuck outside. Plus I get to walk up and down the stairs every so often to keep myself awake. I feel for the new kid Horace, he made the mistake of asking Ellensworth if he could have an indoor post, and now he'll be out there till the spring thaw. Well, he learned a lesson, I guess. Twelfth. I'm looking forward to the family leaving in a few days. It's nice to drink the good wine and play cards with my skills. Uh, and play cards. With my skills, I always make some coin from the others. And as a bonus, Timothy is betting me a week's wages that Benny won't get drunk. I almost feel guilty taking such a sure bet. Jeffers is down sick today, so I've got to keep an eye on both staircases. Not like anything's going to happen, of course. But it means more walking and sore feet in the morning. Fourteenth. We all broke out the wine and got good and soused. And a meeting in the game room at 11 for cards. I didn't drink too much because I got to be sharp enough to make some money off these guys. They're all pretty slobbered, so it should be easy to make a few hundred off them tonight. Continued. It's after 1am now, and I've sobered up and gone back to my post. I managed to win over 200 at the table. Pretty good night. But not like two years ago. Ah, that was a great night. Won 300 just to hold Barney. May he rest in peace. I'm pissed though about Benny. He's just been standing out there with Roger. Hasn't touched a drop. That bet with Timothy will wipe out my game winnings if I don't take care of things. I'll have to find a way to ply old Benny with some wi wine. Maybe I'll slip some hard liquor in it so one glass will have him stumbling about like the buffoon he is. Hello there, sir. You are not my favourite guard right now because this floor is not my favourite floor and you might hear it. Alright, well you're walking away, that's good for me. Leave, leave an escape route. Always leave an escape route. Yes. Footsteps everywhere. Is she coming back? Yeah, sounds like he's going away. We are on the first floor. We just came up here, so that goes up, I guess, to the third floor with bedrooms. We're probably gonna have to go up there later, but not just yet. Might as well check out the sitting room, the library, and this upper area. If I clear this upper area of the foyer of guards, then I have a better chance of getting downstairs to pick the pockets of the guard or guards on the ground floor there. And then that's a natural way to make our way to the office where we have an objective. So this fool here can stay there for the moment. I'm not bothered about him. I might be bothered about them. Light switch. Well, there's it's just patrolling the hallway, okay. Can I turn this light off? Probably not. Oh, we can. There's a stool. I thought it was coins, but it's just a stool that I can pick up and gently put back down. No money out here. What's in the library? Ooh, sliding doors, fancy. Well, surprise, surprise, there's books in the library. What do we have? The Adorna Chronicles. The Adventures of Adriana... Ad sorry, Adriana Adorna, the city's greatest explorer, book three. I'm not going to read that. Uh, book two and book one. Somebody's been reading Adventures. Uh, what was book two? Right, uh, I have no time for reading Adventures. They don't contain clues to loot, so I just have to wait. The big question is, this is a library. Where is the book that opens the secret passage with the secret loot? You cannot, as there's a law about it, you must have a secret passage or secret loot or some kind of, at least a secret compartment. It doesn't have to be an actual passage. But you can't have a library without it, it's just not a library. Doesn't seem to be one though. I shall have to send word to the commissioner. He's got a picture of himself, I guess that's Lord Highwater. Uh, surely there's something. Otherwise, this room is entirely pointless. Well, I guess it's possible it's entirely pointless. Or I am just entirely blind. Also, another possibility. Okay, 
hear footsteps, so I'm going to turn the lights off in case they're coming this way. Yeah, just up and down the hallway there. Oh, well, the library seems, does indeed seem pointless. What's that? It is nothing. <coughs> just the whistling of a blackjack. <coughs> well, the library's not entirely pointless. It's a good out of the way spot to stash some uh, <coughs> unconscious fellows. Well, supposed to be sitting in the chair, but whatever. Old games and the limited animations. There was another guy patrolling this level, so I can't get too careless. Well, I I obviously can, but I shouldn't. What have we got? Light switch, light switch. <clears throat> the light switch is over there. I think there might be a guard out on the balcony here too. No? Let's turn off some lights. So, we have one guard there in the foyer. I can come down the staircase and put a moss arrow by his feet and uh, slip up behind him, I think. Probably the easiest way to get to him. We can finally loot his pocket. So we have a balcony here, which, uh, as far as I can see, is uh, basically decorative. I don't really see a way... I could jump off and hurt myself, but I can't see a way to use it as a way in without rope arrows and without being able to climb the walls. I'm not seeing any light switches for these lights on the side and that's mildly annoying. But the main staircase is clear. There's a guard there. What's there? Nothing. Nothing. Hello. Oh, certainly nothing you need to worry about. No. Nothing. Mm, guess not. Yep. <coughs> A little moss. And There's an entry. He had a key and money. And a moment to notice me before it was all too late. It's dark here. He can he stay here. So there's a book there. Let's see what it says. High waters through history. Okay, not, not interesting. It's just. Let's open the front door if I can. Is that the key that I just picked up? It probably is. Front door key! At least that gives us uh, an escape route if we need it. And this... Operation Burrick Dome. Very noisy gas lamp. Alright. We have cleared the foyer. We have... Guard just hanging out there? He's just hanging out there. Is he looking this way? He looks to be looking this way. Let's go around the other way. I need to be on my guard for uh, other guards. Oh, hello. Would you like to join your fellows in uh, the nap? The High Waters is going to come back and find all the guards asleep and just assume that they all uh, are just blind drunk. Which is not actually a bad assumption. Alright, I need to check that room. First. Oh, he's kind of dozing on the spot there. Alright, I sh should be right. I don't like the looks of that. He's not asleep. Hmm. Wonder what that noise was. There's a door, you don't. Somebody else coming up the stairs behind you. Yes. Oh, it's my good friend. The good friend of the helmet. There's somebody else walking around there. No, don't come this way, helmet man. I don't know where I'm going. That's right, you stay away from me. Several guards up there, okay. That's not a fun place for me to hang out. He's hanging out on uh, bloody tile floor. It's gonna be a pain, so let's just close the door. 
That's what I mean. So he's not the one I hear snoring, there's someone else snoring. So this guy's semi-alert. Or at least, semi-awake. <coughs> Until he turns his back. <coughs> and... Done. <coughs> Sit in a corner. Apart from the moonlight, which is uh, lighting me up there as I run past the windows, it's reasonably dark. What have we got here? <laughs> That's right, sleep on your desk. So, this is the office. This is where we need to get to, and I did pick up the office key on my way in. So let's check out what's in here. Now, last mission I got surprised by an alarm that was quite annoying. I wouldn't be overly surprised if uh, there's something similar in here. So rather than go straight for the safe, let's just have a quick scout around. It's a desk. There's a locked thing on it. There's a couple of piles of money. That's fine. I can take that. Is that a light switch? No, there's two switches. Some statues. No, see, there is a secret switch under the desk. Look at that. Cunning. Okay. There's a book. Are those just the lights, or are those something else? Let's read the book. Let's find out what uh, what we're at, dealing with here. January first. The holidays were a wonderful time with many tender family moments. If only they could have lasted forever. But now the new year calls with some business. My friend Javon in Dayport has informed me that Mark Miller, the eccentric old inventor, has developed a formula for manufacturing flawless emeralds from raw materials, and plans to auction the formula to the underground's highest bidder. I'm not certain why, but I feel like I need to get hold of it, if for no other reason than to keep Fairbanks or someone like him from getting it and doing something with it. I think I'll approach the Hammerites with, the, with an idea. January 4th. Brother Thaddeus, a dear old friend in the Order, has referred me to Brother Claudius at the Cathedral here in Old Ale to speak of my idea with regards to the formula. Namely, that if I obtain the formula and then arrange and fund the procurement of the necessary raw materials, that the hammers would do the actual manufacturing. In, refer in return for their facilities and labours, they would keep 40% of the emeralds for their coffers. I'm meeting with Claudius at Nine Dells in the morning. January 5th. This is most unfortunate. Brother Claudius said in no uncertain terms that the Hammerites were neither interested nor equipped to engage in the manufacture of emeralds. I still need to outbid everyone and get my hands on it, but if I am ever to put it to use I'll have to find some other way. Perhaps it's time to contact the Mechanists, which I understand are a splinter group which broke away from the Hammers recently. I hear that they and their leader, a brother Karas, are more interested in technology than the Order of the Hammer. January 9th, I have met with a Mechanist named Vilnia who has expressed great interest in my proposal. She told me that the Mechanists produce security gadgets for themselves and the nobility which require emeralds, and access to a ready supply of flawless emeralds, even synthetic ones, would allow them to accelerate the production of these machines. She has assured me that Karasa agrees with the arrangement, and expects me to come through with the formula and raw materials. They will be ready to begin production by the end of March. Regarding the formula, I have sent my bid by courier to Miller. I can't imagine at 10,000 that anyone will outbid me, so it's as good as mine. January 11th. I received a correspondence from Miller this morning accepting my bid. He instructed me to send the payment with my most trusted man tomorrow evening. I can only entrust Ellensworth with this, but we'll send Grayson along to keep things in check. Joseph certainly has a temper and Grayson is very level-headed, it won't hurt to play it safe. I'm relieved that I'll have the formula in hand and locked safely away before we leave for our little winter retreat. It will be good to take my mind off these matters for a few days and enjoy the family. Robert is a grown man and I need to connect with him. He has seemed a bit distant these last few months. January 12th. Ellensworth handed me the formula upon his return a short while ago and said that everything went according to plan. Just what I wanted to hear. I've secured it and I'm making preparations to depart on vacation in the morning. What a relief. I do need to tend to one issue when I get back, back however. Philip sometimes likes to wander off with one of the stalls and I need to let him know that those are special stalls and need to be left in the library. I can't be traipsing all over the house looking for the third stall every time I need into my secret office. I'll just get him his own stall to keep in his room and have Mortimer painted blue for him. January 13th. I should have known not to look at the newspaper this morning. Miller was murdered last night. 
I will not have time to question Ellensworth before we depart in the morning, so I must assume that he left Miller alive and well, and that some other opportunistic criminal broke in to rob Miller of the formula, found it already gone, and took out his frustration on the poor man. I fear that Ruffin must have my money, but I dare not say anything to the authorities. The fewer people who know I have the formula, the better. I'm just going to put all this business out of my mind as best I can and enjoy my leave. I only hope I can shake the nagging suspicion in the back of my mind that Joseph somehow was involved, but surely Grayson would have told me any if anything went awry with the transaction. So, stools. The third stool, every time I need into my secret office, I'll just get his own stool to keep in his room. Uh, the stools need to be left in the library. So, and that matter then, I guess there is a secret in the library. And I picked up a stool in the sitting room and there were a couple others in the library I didn't try interacting with. And uh, maybe there's one in Philip's room upstairs. We'll have to see. Uh, so there's three stools needed in the library to get into a secret office. Good to know. What's in here? Well, that's locked. I don't think I've got a key to shoot it. Where's a metal key? Nope. Office key? Nope. And it won't be the front door key or the gate key. So. His emeralds are then going to be in his secret office and probably not in this. We have a switch under the desk. We have these two switches here. Which do appear just to be lights. Alright, that's alright. Less suspicious than I thought. What does this open? Aha! Oh. So we have a safe. And we have a keypad with a lovely four digit display. Well, you know, it's not going to be. Well, there's no. I don't have a zero, so it's not going to be 0451, clearly. Um, or indeed 0457, which is the uh, way it got interpreted in Thief 2. So, I'm not going to just poke at the buttons, because it'll probably just not work, but it also might have an alarm associated with it. I don't see any alarm paraphernalia, like red lights or anything, but it uh, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I need a key for that. It's the key hiding in this plant. That would be silly. Or under the desk, no. I will have to find the key code somewhere else and return to the office to unlock the safe. Let's check out the library again, it's just around the corner, and he did mention there is some secret with it. Let's just check, there's, we're not going to run into our uh, knockout proof friend. Here in the library. Alright, three stools. Three special stools. So here's one. A heavy stool. Oops. Ah, okay. Two. Well, that's not a switch. That is. I guess this third one that was just hiding here. Maybe not in the bedroom. Maybe that's all we need. Ahaha! Alright, I don't need to go searching the bedrooms for, for stools or stool samples either. What have we got? His secret office, it's uh, a little dingy. It doesn't even have lights, it's got a switch. That's gonna be for the door, I'm sure. So we've another safe. It's got a chair which I can barely see and a book which I can't read. Alright, let's see if I can pick the lock on the safe. I can. Dun -dun -dun. All right, open it into my face as usual. What have we got? We've got money, more money, and more money. We have some synthetic emeralds and a new objective. These emeralds must be production prototypes. You'd better find them and steal them all. Optional. Okay, so that's one of the set of production prototypes. And we have a note. The emerald formula, in fact. 
Uh, find the formula for synthesizing emeralds. What does it look like? Oh, that's uh, complex indeed. Uh, there's a lot more hydrocarbons in there than I was expecting. Nothing else in the safe. Alright, so we found the synthetic emeralds, and I'm kind of stuck in the corner here somehow. Come on. Come on. There we are. Not quite sure how that happened. And that means the formula for the emeralds, which is our primary objective, we've, we've got. So his office safe must contain some more production prototypes, I guess. So we want to do that. It says optional, but, you know, it puts it on the list, I better tick it off. And we still need to get 5,000 total loot, and I'm sure there will be some more there in the office safe. And we need to find the stolen sword, which was in his father's crypt, which who knows where that is right now. I guess that must be the stairs down. The stairway that we found in the courtyard must lead to the crypt. And we don't have any dirty laundry yet either, so uh, literal or metaphorical. Either would do, you know, either... You didn't tell me it had to be one or the other. That, that, oh, it's lights. It's a unusually shaped switch for lights. Alright. Um, surely someone would notice if, like, you know, you just left these stools randomly on the floor with glowing bits. But, uh, yeah, fair enough. You know, nobody, nobody will suspect anything. With stools floating in the air. Right, your secret is safe with me, Mr. Highwater. I wouldn't want anybody to know because then I wouldn't be able to come and rob you again. Right, map. Now we've been to the office, we've been here, been to the library and the sitting room, and we've been all the way around there. We have not been into the stairwell yet because there's one or two guards there inconveniently. I think next I'm going to go check upstairs. There's still a key in the office. We need we need to find a key for the little locked container in his office. And we also need to find the code for his safe in his office. Oh, hello there. Are you our, you are our red-headed, hard-headed friend again. I wish I still had my gas arrows. But I guess you're just an obstacle I'll have to remember to avoid. I did at least pick your pocket, so... No, oh, no, no. Don't come this way. Don't come back this way. Well, that's right. You go back there. Very good. So, I'm surprised they have the lights off up here, but that's good for me. Who is up here? There were a couple of guards running around before, but... Oh, there's one right there. I was about to make a dash for the light switch, but decided better of it. Ugh. But, uh, you probably shouldn't stay in the light there. Let's, let's put you in a corner here. Nobody will see you or suspect a thing. Alright, uh... This is the... just bedrooms on this floor. Bookshelves. There's a key. The bedroom's key, okay. That will be useful. Another light switch. And... oh, all the bedrooms are labelled. Nice. Lord high water. What do you have in your bedroom, Guter? A bed. Well, that's a surprise. Some loot as well. Yeah, we're up to 4,000 out of the 5,000 we need. Some music, which I don't care to listen to. Bunch of books, bunch of scrolls, that diary note. More, it's more things that look readable but aren't. I hear somebody else. Who's that? Oh, hello. Are you going to come over here and let me knock you out? No? I'm just going to stand there like a doofus. It's alright. You read those books. They're, they're very in interesting. <laughs> now, before I was interrupted, I was uh, in Lord Highwater's bedroom, so you might as well come in here and hope nobody finds you in here and uh, 
tells the Lord you were on his bed to, for whatever. He has a bathroom with noisy floor. And nothing there. Oh, no cabinets, okay. Fancy bath. And a key, another key. This is a small metal key. I wonder if that's the one I need for a safe. Uh, a couple of bottles, which I can't use the key on, but I can't pick up. They're not, not speed potions or anything. They look a bit like speed potions. Right, done with the bathroom. Done with his bedroom. Let's keep going down the side and go around to the other side. So we have a metal key and a small metal key. I guess one might be the crypt. I didn't try. Um, one might be his thing in his office. Oops. I locked her bedroom door instead of unlocking it. So Anne's bedroom. She has a very fancy dollhouse. That's neat. And uh, a picture. A little locked container that I can pick. A lot of tumblers there. Okay. With another brooch in it for uh, 4,400 total. A miniature writing desk. I guess child size. It makes sense, but it's not exactly a child size bed. But uh, she'll grow into the bed. And another fancy bathroom. Once again, some bottles that look like healing potions and speed potions, but can't be picked up. Appears to be no loot in the bathroom. There seems to be lights in this hallway I can't turn off. Is that a... No, it does not appear to be a book I can read. This is Mary's bedroom. Mary has been writing notes that are illegible because I can't read them. Mary has... Another jewelry box. Okay. There we are. With some earrings that look very large for a child and a bracelet. And everybody has their own fancy bathroom. I mean, it is a mansion. This makes sense, but uh, it means. Quite a lot of pointless rooms that with noisy floors. And pointless rooms are fine, but pointless rooms with noisy floors are not even useful as, you know, hiding places. I hear a guard. Coming or going? Going. Going. Oh, it's our friend again. Alright. Robert's room is locked, but we have the bedroom key here somewhere. It's uh, odd that all the bedrooms have exactly the same key. You know, I would not want my bedroom to be locked. Robert has no jewellery. Let's just close the door and turn the light on. He has some books. He has a book I can read. To my dearest Robert, all my love, Julia. I want to know what's behind it, what the actual book is. He's got a very fancy bedspread there. What does Robert keep in his bathroom? A hairbrush, pointless, more bottles I can't collect. Towels, toilet, really quite, quite disappointing. Uh, and anything under his bed. His rug is at a very odd angle there, but uh, oh, he does have something under his bed. I need to go under <laughs> the bed to get down. And he's got a little secret door. Dear Robert, 
I enjoyed meeting you at the Masquerade Ball. You danced divinely and I had a wonderful time. I confess that I had been watching you dance with the other girls and hoped you would ask me to dance also. And you did! I enjoyed our conversation on the balcony afterwards as well. I pray you won't think me too forward, but I would like to see you again. A family friend, an artist, has a studio in Dayport and offers us the use of it. Will you meet me there tomorrow night, at Ten Bells? Please say yes. I enclose a note with directions to the studio. I look forward to our rendezvous with great anticipation. Julia. Dearest Robert, I am all aflutter today and I cannot keep my mind on my work. It insists upon drifting back to last night and those wonderful hours we spent together. I feel as though we shared our souls with each other. I had no idea we'd talk so late into the evening. Evening? More like the wee hours of the morning. How I ever managed to sneak back into my house unnoticed, I'll never know. I cannot stop thinking about you. I long to see you. My parents leave town for a few days at the end of this week and I've arranged the use of the studio again. Please say you'll meet me then. I eagerly await your reply. Julia. My darling. Never did I dream that love could be so sweet. The world seems a new place today. The light cleaner, the colours brighter, the days so full of promise. You have awakened in me a self I have never known, and what wondrous feelings and emotions she embodies. It was painful to reveal my last name to you, but I feel a weight has been lifted from me, and I am truly relieved that you feel as I do. Our father's rivalry has nothing to do with our true love. I realise it complicates matters immensely, but we must keep our love secret, at least for now. I cannot wait to see you again. Soon, my darling. Soon. My love, I am so glad we decided to confide in Brother Thaddeus. As the only mutual friend of both our families, I feel he alone is in the unique position to support us, and surely he will marry us come springtime. I will miss you terribly while you are away with your family. Think of me and know that I will be thinking of you. Keep my picture close, that you may be reminded what awaits your return. Be safe. Return to me with all speed. All my love, Julia. So Julia is the daughter of Fairbanks, I believe, who has hired us, and Robert is clearly, you know, is the high tower kid here. Ah, uh, Romeo and Juliet, Robert and Julia, yes. Oh my stars, I am in love. She was at the Bumblesons Masquerade Ball, so graceful, so mysterious. After several dances, I convinced her we should unmask, and she was a sight to behold. Delicate skin, fair hair, and lips the colour of a rose in spring. I was mad about her, and it was clear she felt the same of me. Then I said we must make plans to meet again, and told her my name, and I thought I saw a look of panic in her eyes for a moment. No doubt she realised who my father is. But then she was again as lovely as ever, and she charmed me such that I nearly didn't get her name. But at last, as she took her leave, she revealed it. Julia. And she said she would be in touch. I cannot bear to wait for a communique. October 30th. Nearly a week has passed, and I think of Julia night and day. I long for a message from her, but I am beginning to fear that she was merely playing me for the fool. Or is too intimidated by my name to send me a note. I must remain hopeful and vigilant. November 4th. Oh, joyous day! I got a note from my Julia, relayed to me by my dear old Mortimer from some acquaintance of his. I suppose she was too nervous to send it by post. She wants to meet tomorrow night at Ten Bells, in Dayport of all places, in an artist's studio. She says he is a family friend and has offered to let us rendezvous there after hours. I am literally trembling with excitement as I write this. Tomorrow night cannot come soon enough. I have confided in old Mortimer, and he has agreed to arrange to let me slip out in the carriage for the rendezvous. I have also mentioned it to my oldest friend and confidant, Brother Thaddeus. He is most excited for me. November 6th. Last night was truly a magical experience. I still feel as if I am floating on clouds this morning. Julia was there in a lovely green dress, and as soon as she let me into the studio, we embraced and held one another for what seemed an eternity. We talked for hours, discussing all manner of things, and professed our love. I couldn't bear for the night to end, but eventually I said my good night, and we returned home in the carriage. We arranged to meet three nights hence in the same location. November 9th. Last night's rendezvous with Julia was even more magical. We declared our love boldly, but upon opening a window and singing it to the officer patrolling outside, she quickly shushed me. I asked her why must we maintain secrecy, and then she told me her last name. Fairbanks. Julia Fairbanks. I am in love with the daughter of my father's bitterly hated rival. Our families have been feuding for three generations. I should have run away, but I could not. I love her and to hell with the feud. It's my father's feud, but it is not mine. Julia feels the same way. She declares me her one true love and says, damn the consequences. But things are certainly much more complicated now. December 5th. The last month has been a whirlwind of secret meetings with Julia, telling lies and calling on favours to keep our love a secret from both families. We could not bear it any longer and met together with brother Thaddeus, a friend to both families, and revealed our love to him. The dear man accepted it as I knew he would and agreed to marry us in the spring when the time is right. He convinced us our families were not re yet ready to accept our love and urged us to continue in secret for now and exercise patience. 
Julia gave me a picture of herself to get me through the long droughts between our meetings. I've tucked it inside the storybook on my desk so I can open it whenever I need, without fear of it being discovered. December 30th. The holidays have proven most difficult as I want nothing more to be than to be with Julia. Yet the call of my family during these times is hard to ignore. My dear brothers and sisters are the world to me, and I have enjoyed this time with them, but I long to be with my love more. I have to see her again before we leave on winter holiday in two weeks. Brother Thaddeus has been more supportive of our, of our love than I would ever have imagined. I can't fathom how awfully difficult this would be without him. January 13th. Spring seems ages away. Will this winter never end? We leave on winter holiday on the morrow, and the idea of being away for five long days is distressing me. I want nothing more than to take my storybook along to keep me company, but alas, were the picture to be discovered, it would spell disaster. I will have to rely on the image of my beautiful love in my mind's eye to get me through. And new objectives. Uh, he keeps his diary under his bed, not very well hidden, and his... Well, I'll, I, will, I will let his uh, notes from Julia not be discovered by the servants, but uh, I'm sure they've discovered his diary and read it already. What's the objective? Oh boy, it looks like Highwater's son Robert and Fairbanks' daughter Julia are head over heels in love. Better not mention this to Fairbanks. The last thing you want to do now is escalate this feud to a war while you're in the thick of it. Alright, uh, it's uh, already complete, so it's just a bonus objective for finding the diary. We still need to find the sword in the crypt, I guess. We need to find some loot. We need to find the code to his safe. Which is not in, uh, in Highwater's safe. It was not in his bedroom. Alright, that's Robert's room. Who's two more? We have George. Uh, clearly young, he's got a toy sailboat, some alphabet blocks, and a ball. Which is bouncy! Uh, and does not bounce on pillows. Yay! That's nice. Good to see someone making use of the physics here. Anything in this bedroom, uh, bathroom? It appears not. And... Ah, it's our 5,000 gold complete. Like, I would just leave the flowers sitting there on the uh, top after taking the vase. Great. Save the power. Keep an eye out for the guard. And go to Philip's room. Well, that's not valuable. He's got a... Oh, that's an amazing toy castle there. He has some gold. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be portraits of, them, of themselves in their room. That seems odd. Uh, I bet he has nothing in his bathroom either, except the usual. Yeah. Alright. So, we have hit our financial objective, 5,000 total loot. We still have to find the emeralds, we have to find the sword. I do have the key now to... I think the small metal key is the key to the little jewellery box that Lord Highwater had on the desk in his office. So I hope that has the code to uh, that we need. Oh, we've got Lady Highwater's bedroom as well. Let's let's check that. She should have some jewellery at least. Well, gold candlesticks, if nothing else. There's music. No. Or jewelry, yep. Or candlestick, she has a diary. Oh dear, all these diaries, I'm tired of reading them out. Uh, but oh, okay. January 6th. I'm so glad we hired Evie and James onto the staff last fall. Evie is great with Philip and little George, and their little girl Gloria is nearly Anne's age, so it's a blessing she has a playmate here in the house. My dear younger daughter is so precocious, she would surely drive us all mad otherwise. As for Mary, she's growing into a lovely young lady. It's hard to believe she will be 16 in April. My goodness, how time flies. Robert, on the other hand, has already grown, and I'm certain he's in love with someone. I remember falling for Alan when I was 18, and I know what that faraway look in his eyes means. I hope he introduces us soon. January 9th. Alan has been preoccupied with something lately. After a lovely holiday season in which he was fully engaged with me and the children, he seems to be worrying about something these days. I dare not ask him what's troubling him. No doubt it's some business venture or other. I'm really looking forward to our short winter vacation coming up next week. 
We barely left home during the holidays, and they were a busy time, so getting away with the children and Maddie and Mortimer to help will no doubt be a welcome respite for all of us. I thought to bring Evie along, but I could tell she wanted to stay home with Gloria, and I can't blame her for that. Maddie is childless and won't mind being nanny for a few days. Thirteenth. We're leaving tomorrow, and the break can't come soon enough. Alan has been really troubled of late, and I overheard him talking to Ellensworth yesterday about something involving emeralds and someone named Miller. I would love to hope it's a new piece of jewellery for me or the girls, but I could tell from the tone of their conversation that it was business. I went to ask Robert something late the other night, and he wasn't in his room. I asked Mortimer where he was, and he mumbled something about not knowing, but I could tell he was hiding something. I'm starting to suspect Mort knows something about my son's romantic endeavours, which would make sense, he's the kind of faithful servant a young man would trust with his secrets. Well, I'm glad she's not as uh, verbose in her diary as some of the others seem to be. Oh, she has jewelry here in the in the bathroom. There is finally a bathroom that has been worth looting. Only just, but uh, it was still more than nothing. All right, light off, and yeah, slight hitch there. Doors open. So, back downstairs. Hope that our red-headed, or red-tunicked friend has not come to join us. I have one moss arrow left, and I will use it on getting to this gentleman here. I probably don't need to, but I... I feel like there must be something in this room, right? It's our red tunic friend. Coming up the stairs, I think. Or walking very noisily nearby, anyway. Here he comes. Don't mind me, sir. Just carry on with your patrol. Mm. That's right. Okay, what's this money? What's this book? It's not a book. It merely looks like a book. <coughs> Did you have anything on your belt? No. Alright, so that's... And he's continuing to wander around. That's the second stairway. I don't think there's anything down, down here I need. Should be safe to check. There's another book. Yes, Virginia, the trickster is real. And other scary stories. So. He seems far enough away. I can leave that open now. Oops. Back to the office. Just through here. And here. Where is that small metal key that we had? Small metal key. Nope. Metal key? Nope. Oh dear, there's another key we're missing. And I really can't pick this. That's uh, unfortunate. Just, you know, none of those should be the right key, but just check. Okay, so we have... A safe, which we need a four-digit code to, probably locked in here. Um, nothing in his waste, base, waste basket there. I have two keys that I cannot, uh, I have not found a use for. This metal key and this small metal key. One of them must be the crypt downstairs. So let's go check that. The other one, I might have to come back up and scour his bedroom again. But. Uh, so quickest way downstairs, I guess is down the stairs. Tramp noisily across the floor. And courtyards, well, uh, yeah, we can get into it from either from uh, the west side, which side of the house? We're on the east side now, right? Where's my compass? Compass, compass. West side, okay. Yeah. Right, here's the courtyard. Let's, this must be the crypt. 
I hope there's no ghosts or zombies or anything. Oh, that's the wrong one. So this will be the metal key, right? No, small metal key. Okay, I have two keys that uh, open locks that I don't know, that I have not found. This is most peculiar. Now, there was a note somewhere about... Uh, what was her name? Ellen something? Huh? One of these servants having the key to the crypt, having been tasked with huh? fetching the uh, sword from the crypt, but they don't seem to have... None of them appear to have keys on them here. She got a key on her belt? Nope. Well, alright, now, now I'm tripping over their bodies, so I'll put them back in the corner again. Yeah. Least that way they won't uh, disrupt movement. Okay, uh, two metal keys that uh, I cannot. that I don't know what they open. One. Crypt door that I'm pretty sure I checked and I can't pick the lock. Yeah, can't pick it. So I have two keys that I need to find locks for and one lock. No, and two locks that I need to find keys for. This may take some time to uh, run around and scale them up. Uh, it has been another hour, so I'm just going to sit out here and uh, take another short break end this episode here and I will see you next episode where I hunt for the missing locks and the missing keys. Thanks for watching.